you so much for being here with me. My name is Natalie. I am the holistic nutritionist behind Glow Nutritional Consulting. And I have heard a lot of people sneezing lately. So I thought that tonight would be an awesome time to chat about what you can do for seasonal allergies. Now to start with this out with, just as kind of a super highlight story, um, just to let you know just how much you are in control or can be in control of your allergies. Um, there was uh, one year, I, I was young when I got into kind of health stuff, um, and so there was one year that I suffered awfully with allergies um, and I was able to eliminate them uh, the following year when I had made changes. And uh, my husband, my now husband, um, at the time was my boyfriend, and uh, he um, used to have to, come from kind of like March time until about September time, nearly every day take um, antihistamines. And he is completely without them at this point in time and doesn't even suffer. With the exception of when we stay over somewhere with a cat now, um, so, which he usually beats off with one of the things that I'm going to be telling you guys about tonight. But I wanted to kind of highlight those two stories because uh, it can make such a massive difference to get back in control of your allergies because it can impact how your the fogginess of your brain or versus the clarity of your brain. Uh, it can change how exhausted you are. Um, and obviously the teary eyes and uh, snotty nose is not helpful for anybody. So let's jump in. Okay, so the first thing, there are kind of two um, major awesome things that you can do um, for seasonal allergies. The reason that these work is if you can picture allergies like a bucket um, in your body that is not actually there, but if you can picture them for a second, like your immune system has so much room kind of in this bucket before it overflows into teary eyes and um, sinus challenges and all the other stuff that seems to come along with allergies. So when you cannot control all of your allergies, what you can take a look at is what is harming your immune system now, and you can eliminate the ones that you are in control of. So you may not be able to control if birch is coming into or out of season, or if um, hay fever stuff is really kicked up in high gear, or any of the environmental stuff, though you can definitely purify the air in your home. Um, but beyond that, you're kind of stuck with what's out there, unfortunately. But on the flip side, if you can find out what is challenging your immune system food-wise, and then eliminate those things, you have just created a ton more room in your kind of immune system bucket to prevent overflowing when you do have kind of that hay fever stuff. So um, the very first thing that I recommend doing is getting an IgG test done, which is a simple kind of blood prick test. Uh, in Canada, these are often run through naturopaths. Um, there are some holistic nutritionists that also run them. And then uh, in the States, there is a lab called Life Extension uh, Lab that I'm not affiliated with, um, but that can run this IgG test. So they send you this little kind of finger prick. Um, you prick your finger, or if you're doing it for a child or somebody, you prick their finger. Uh, and then you get kind of um, a couple of drops of blood onto a kind of Q-tippy looking thing and then you seal it all up and send it into the lab and they kind of test your blood against all of these different foods. Usually the panels are like 100 foods or 95 foods or 140 foods. Um, so once you have your results, which take a few weeks to get back, um, then you are able to see very clearly what foods you need to either eliminate or um, usually there's like a sliding scale. So there might be like red foods would be really aggressive, um, orange foods would be eat moderately or infrequently, and then um, green foods usually is how the tests are read. 
um, are totally fine, no allergic reaction, you're all good there. So what is really kind of interesting is when you go into a doctor or an allergist for um, an IgE, which is a different kind of uh, blood allergy reaction test, they'll either scrape your arm a bunch of times or they'll, um, they'll scrape your back a whole bunch of times with like a little needle and then they'll apply all of these different things onto your back. Now, one of the problems with that is that if you have several allergies, um, you can actually kind of, the results can be impacted a little bit because now your body's just reacting. It's like super overloaded with all these different things. Um, but that is what's called a true allergy. Now, IgG uh, is another antibody that um, they can measure. Uh, that they run this other test with. So it's actually the more frequent but less severe kind of allergy. So um, things like peanut anaphylactic type of allergies would be in that IgE category, the very dangerous kind. The other kind, the IgG that we're talking about tonight, um, is a different kind of testing that is really kind of, uh, that is more, you can take up to three days to kind of have these reactions. They can be a lot more subtle, but they can be a lot wider dispersed. So they can affect things like um, moodiness or uh, brain fog or uh, digestion. There's a few different areas that they can really, really impact. Um, but it wouldn't be something that you'd be able to nail down with kind of diet tracking all the time because sometimes it can be um, three entire days before you can get the reaction from this kind of food allergy. So when you get that test result back, eliminating your red foods especially, and then alternating some of your orange foods, if you have those, can make a massive, massive difference to your allergies. Um, so that is something that I have seen time and time again. It's just huge when people have these out of their diet completely. Um, and it doesn't necessarily mean that you have to keep all of the red ones out all the time, but it does mean if you are fighting seasonal allergies, um, then it can be important to eliminate those if you're looking to do it naturally. So that for the time that you're kind of in hay fever or whatever it is environmentally time, uh, you can at least make your body a little happier. So that would be number one. Um, get an IgG test done and start eliminating those things. If you need help, sometimes it can be tricky when you kind of have to eliminate everything. This was a test I got done a long time before I was a holistic nutritionist. Um, and it felt really, really challenging to kind of look at all the foods that I had to exclude and somehow try and find balance with nutrient intake and actually making sure I was eating enough food and all of that kind of good stuff. So um, if you need any help, reach out with your kind of uh, chart and we'll see what we can do for you here. So send me a private message um, at Glow Nutritional Consulting and we will see what we can do. Number two, the second thing that totally saves us um, and that we keep on hand pretty much like an antihistamine now um, is a vitamin C with a high dose of quercetin, which is a uh, bioflavonoid that blocks um, histamine exits from the cell, so or from all the cells. So uh, that is something that's incredibly, incredibly helpful. There are uh, a couple of different good brands out there. I think uh, Natural Factors is the one that I use off the top of my head. They have a C Extra that's 500 milligrams of uh, vitamin C with 500 milligrams of um, bioflavonoids and rose hips and um, citrus peel and a couple of different sources of really high amounts of bioflavonoids, which all help together to reduce inflammation, which helps the immune system overall, but also really combats allergies super, super fast. So this is something that will take kind of um, half an hour if we're kind of going to be um, around cats or something, kind of half an hour or 20 minutes beforehand. Uh, because it's a vitamin C, even though it's a capsule, um, or sorry, because it's a, a tablet, uh, because it's vitamin C, it breaks down a lot easier and very quickly. So it tends to be pretty active pretty fast. Um, so that is something that can super, super help with allergies too. So it can be something that you can take a few times throughout the day. It can be something that you start allergy season taking like 
two or three as needed. Um, some people I will recommend taking tons more depending on how their allergies are. Other people I will recommend less. Um, and you'll just kind of keep taking them throughout the seasonal allergy area and then lower the dose um, to come off of them. So that can be something that is super, super helpful to have kind of in your first aid kit or in your purse or around your house, um, something that you can reach to when you need a little allergy help. So that is number two. Um, I wanted to mention to one of the kind of, uh, instead of the vitamin C with bioflavonoids that's a tablet, one of the things that I have recommended for little kids is Camu Camu powder, which is a really high in vitamin C, um, a superfood powder that you can get and uh, stir into kind of orange juice or apple juice or diluted orange juice or apple juice, whatever, uh, throw it into a smoothie and it will get some bioflavonoids and vitamin C in as well. So it can be helpful uh, even for little kids and especially little kids that can't swallow tablets, but that's also a good um, way to go. So I absolutely love the vitamin C tablets. I find them super helpful to take with me. Um, I think Camu Camu is totally a great idea. I do not have personal experience with which to speak up right now um, on using that with the same efficacy for allergies personally. Um, but I know that it has worked for other people and made a massive, massive difference. So that is that. Uh, vitamin C and Camu Camu um, kind of as two different options for helping with allergies. Number three, throwing peppermint essential oil or lemongrass essential oil into the air in your home can be really, really helpful. Anytime there's a need to clean the air, I always throw lemongrass in. And anytime there's a need to kind of open the lungs or open the sinuses, I always throw peppermint in. These are some of my go-tos around here. Uh, make sure you're getting good quality brands and otherwise make sure that they are safe for you to use if you have pets or little kids. Um, who can be very sensitive to essential oils. So keep that in mind. That can be really helpful to just clean out the air in your home a little bit um, so that you don't have uh, added stress onto your immune system and onto your body through this time of the year. And then very lastly, uh, I always think this is so cool just in general, but also very helpful for allergy season, is uh, if you are not allergic to them, uh, then bringing some house plants into your home that clean the air. So there was some really cool studies done by NASA a very long time ago. It's amazing how long ago they did these studies on um, some room cleaning or air cleaning, air filtering plants that take out a whole bunch of different stuff from the air around you. So uh, this one here is English Ivy, which is a totally awesome one. That's one of the reasons that I have it in here, it keeps the air fresh. Um, it takes out uh, almost, I think it was four of the five major chemicals that they tested for in, um, in the air quality kind of tests. So it took out most of them, and then uh, peace lilies were another really common one that took out most of those uh, kind of chemicals from the air as well. So that can be really, really helpful just to freshen up the air. Again, it's not gonna be helpful if you are allergic to any of those specific plants, uh, but if you search the NASA clean air um, house plants, uh, study, you should be able to find out. I know there's like a huge page on Wikipedia now. There's like tons of different resources with that information. Just be careful. Again, uh, some plants are toxic to kids and some plants are toxic to uh, pets. So make sure that if you have either, uh, you're being safe and know what is to keep far away or not even to have or what is to kind of um, or what replacements you can use that will filter out similar things. So those are the big pieces for you guys to stop allergies in your tracks. Number one, get an IgG test done um, and then eliminate those allergens. If you need some help around how to still get the nutrients that you need into your body while doing that, so that you don't go into kind of like a deficit there, then you can let me know. Number two is to start increasing the amount of vitamin C, but specifically the amount of bioflavonoids, which are often paired in supplements with uh, vitamin C. They, in nature, they're found together. So um, in supplements, they try to kind of emulate that in good, at least good brands will. Um, and uh, the flip side is the whole food version 
is Camu Camu um, powder, which is a little uh, berry, I think. Uh, and it is ground into a powder that you can get. It's very high in vitamin C and as well as uh, bioflavonoids. It can be mixed into some kind of a juice and uh, had throughout the day as you need it. And then number three is to clean out the air with awesome essential oils. Uh, peppermint and lemongrass were my two go-tos. And then number four is to bring in any house plants if you are not allergic to them so that they can help clean the air and get extra chemicals out of the air so that you are free to breathe easily. So that is all for me tonight. I hope this helps you so much. If you have been suffering with seasonal allergies or if spring is starting to touch down and you've been going through a super long winter and you're just like, I want to enjoy it as much as I can, uh, these things can really massively help if you're looking to do so naturally. So that is all. Thank you so much for being here with me and I will see you again on Friday evening. Bye guys.